If you've got a Mac, there's a couple of things you need to know if you're buying an external SSD. So in this video, we're going to talk about all the different features you need to be looking at and what models I recommend. Now, a couple months ago, I did make a guide detailing a bunch of different things about SSDs for Mac users. Most of the info in that video still stands current, but since then, I've gotten to use a couple more different external SSDs, and I've also done a few enclosure reviews, and I wanted to update my thoughts on the state of external SSDs for Macs in the middle of 2024. Also, I do want to say this is not a sponsored video. None of these companies have paid me to say anything about their SSDs. Now, some of them did send these to me for free in order to make videos about them, but this is my experience using the drives. I'm going to tell you exactly which ones I would personally recommend for both the consumer and the power user. So if you have a Mac computer, there's going to be two basic speed ranges that you can expect to get from your SSD. There's the class of the 750 to 950 megabytes per second, and then there's the 2500 to 2900 megabytes per second. And also, if you look at those two speed classes, typically the 750 to 950 megabyte a second drives are going to be more designed for consumers who aren't looking to get the most optimal performance, and they'll also sometimes have issues with bogging down under a heavy load. So that's going to be the first class. And then the faster class is more designed for professionals, for video editors, photographers, musicians who need to have really fast file transfer speeds. And also if you're continually moving data or editing things, then you need to have a really fast data rate. So those are going to be a better option if you're doing more pro grade work. And then the other class that I just don't recommend is kind of the middle tier and we'll go through all that. So the first class is going to be your USB 3.2 style drives and these typically advertise speeds anywhere from 700 to 1000 megabytes a second but in the real world expect to get about 750 to 900 megabytes a second out of these drives and they'll also have some issues with heat as well. These are drives like the Crucial X9 Pro and also the Samsung T7, the T7 Shield. There's also the SanDisk Extreme portable SSD I don't typically recommend that one because that one has had some issues with losing people's data. But these USB 3.2 drives are going to be a great option if you want something that's faster than a spinning disk hard drive and if you're mostly just looking to store files off to the side or make backups and copies without moving a ton of data at once on them. These are going to slow down if you start to move two, three, five hundred gigabytes at a time and if you move a terabyte of data it's going to be kind of slow. It's going to take you a while and it'll also slow down as it goes because the cache will fill up and it'll also just get hotter as well. But what's really nice about these is they're a little bit more affordable than some of the other drives on the list. So if you're working on a budget, these are going to be a great option for you. Also a great option if you just need to keep files saved to the side of your computer. But I typically don't recommend using these as working or editing drives because they're not going to be as fast as the built-in drives on your MacBook. The next class of drives are considered USB 3.2 dual lane drives. And these are drives like the Crucial X10 Pro, the Samsung T9. There's also the SanDisk Extreme Pro drive. And that one's also a USB dual lane drive. Those advertise speeds on the box of 2,000 megabytes a second, but in the real world, they're going to be just as fast as these other more affordable drives. They're going to top out at around 900 megabytes a second, usually because Macs are not compatible with the dual lane USB speeds. Even if your Mac has USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, it doesn't matter. Macs don't work with dual lane speeds. So I would only buy a drive like the Samsung T9 or the Crucial X10 Pro or the dual lane drives if you find a really good deal on them. Otherwise, just get the cheaper version of the drive because they're going to give you the same speed and performance. The next class of drives is going to be your Thunderbolt and USB 4 drives. These are drives like the Sandus Professional Pro G40 and the Oyen U34 Bolt. These drives are awesome and they're ridiculously fast. They're not quite as fast as the built-in SSDs on your Mac, but they're going to be the fastest option possible in a portable SSD and they use either Thunderbolt or USB 4 to get these really high speeds depending on what the drive is. Now the Sandus Pro G40, this can only use Thunderbolt. It doesn't use USB 4 to get the fastest speeds, but the Oyen, this one is a really cool drive. It's a little bit bigger than the SanDisk one. This can use USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, USB 3.2. So this can work with pretty much any device. Although if you use it with a phone or an iPad, it is going to need a powered hub because it does draw a little bit more power. Another cool thing about this Oyen one is it's available in capacities all the way up to eight terabytes. So you can get a ton of file storage on this drive. On the SanDisk, I typically get speeds around 2,500 megabytes a second, and on the Oyen, I typically get speeds of about 2,900 megabytes a second. So these are both really fast, very close in speed, although the Oyen is a little bit faster. The Oyen also runs just a little bit more than the SanDisk Pro G40 does, and you can get the Oyen in either two, four, or eight terabytes. The Pro G40 comes in one, two, and four terabytes. If you're trying to decide what capacity you should get, I really don't recommend buying a one terabyte drive very often because one terabyte just doesn't really give you a ton of storage, but a two or a four are 
going to be great options and with the four it's going to give you more ability to keep more files off of your computer and then also if you want to transfer them to other drives and just let them pile up before you start to distribute them to other drives the four terabytes really going to come in handy for that especially if you're using a lot of large project files. Another great thing about these USB 4 and Thunderbolt drives is the companies that make them know they're going to be used by professionals so they put more thermal management in them and these ones both have an aluminum cooling core on them and these are going to take a lot longer to overheat and I haven't had any issues with either of these overheating. Also if you need to move a terabyte of data then these are going to be way faster with that higher speed and you can move a terabyte of data in about nine or ten minutes using one of these drives. These are also going to be better if you're under a sustained workload where you're constantly working on your computer because they will not overheat. So I really recommend if you're a pro, get a USB 4 or a Thunderbolt drive because these are going to be way better for you. They're not going to bog down. They're going to allow you to move a lot more data way faster. These are all considered pre-built drives because the drive's already on the inside of the enclosure. They're ready to go for you. But I also recently got to test out these two drives by Sateki. These are both considered enclosures, so you actually buy your own SSD separate and then you put it on the inside of the drive. So on this Sateki one, I have a Samsung drive on the inside of it. And I have two versions of the Sateki. Both of these are pretty cool, although this one tops out at the slower USB 3.2 speeds. So you get about 800 and 900 megabytes a second out of this enclosure. And then this bigger one is a USB 4 enclosure that gets you close to the 2900 megabyte a second speeds. This is an awesome option and it does a really good job at managing the thermal load on it. But I still have a hard time recommending buying one of these drives where you build your own because they typically just don't do as good of a job at dissipating heat. This one has some thermal paste on the top of the lid. That helps. I haven't had issues with this one overheating, but typically if you buy a drive from a brand like Oyen or SanDisk Professional, those are just made for pros and they're made to deal with the heat better. So if you're doing any kind of professional work where you don't want to lose any files or you don't want your performance to get bogged down, I recommend just sticking with these pre-built drives because they're going to be just a little bit more expensive than buying the enclosure and buying your own SSD and sticking it in, and they're going to give you a higher guaranteed data rate on them. So after talking about all these specs and standards, which is the right drive for you? Get the lower end USB 3.2 drives like the Crucial X9 Pro or the Samsung T7 drive if you're doing more occasional file transfers and you're not using a ton of data transferring back and forth and if you're not in the professional world. I also really recommend getting the Crucial X9 Pro over the Samsung just because this one is so much more small and it's also got higher durability ratings than the Samsung. So this is my favorite USB 3.2 drive, the Crucial X9 Pro. And then if you're looking for a more professional drive, I recommend getting the SanDisk Professional Pro G40 or also the Oyen U34 Bolt. Both of these are great drives and I've had a fantastic experience using both of these. And these are also going to be backwards compatible with slower standards as well if you're not able to use your fastest Mac at any moment. And then lastly, you can always get one of these external enclosures and put your own drive in it, but then you're not going to have guaranteed speed or longevity or heat performance with these drives. So these are going to be a little bit more risky than buying one of the pre-built ones, but these are a great option because you can always swap out different NVMe drives in them, put whichever ones you have laying around, or have a couple different NVMe's and swap them out in the same enclosure. If you're looking to buy any of these drives, I do have links for all of this in the description below. If you have any other questions about external SSDs for Macs, leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.